Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a floor equation. Let's start with the definition of the floor value. The floor value of x is defined as the greatest integer less than or equal to x. So in a, in a sense, it's rounding down. So let's say if you had the floor value of 3.14, that will be a 3. Okay, so how do we solve floor value equations? Well, there's a couple different methods, but the one that I most often use is setting the floor value equal to an integer, which is n, and then go from there. So we're gonna start with that one. So let's go ahead and suppose that the floor value of x is equal to n, where n is an integer. Now what happens if you make this assumption by the definition of the floor value, this becomes, this gives us an inequality actually, I should say, x is gonna be between n and n plus one. And don't forget that n is an integer. Okay, so that's the first thing we get, but by replacing the floor value of x with n, we get another equation, obviously, in two variables, but we'll take care of that. So we get the floor value of xn is equal to n. And this also implies another inequality, which is xn between 10 and 11. So you always write it between two consecutive integers where the expression is equal to, can be equal to the lower value. Okay, great. Now, we do have two inequalities, but first of all, we have to make some assumptions. Let's suppose that n is a positive number here. Now, why do I... Uh, why do I have to make an assumption? Because if n is negative, then inequality will be handled differently. Okay, so suppose n is positive. Of course, you can also look at the case where n is negative, and I'll tell you about that. So if n is positive, the first inequality doesn't change, really, but the second one, what we can do for the second one is actually we can divide everything by n, and we're going to get something like this. We'll get x between 10 over n and 11 over n. Great. Now we do have this inequality and we do have the first inequality which is between n and n plus 1. So this is pretty much what we have so far and we know that n is an integer. So how do we solve this system of inequalities? And it's in two variables, right? Well, since n is an integer, it's going to be easier to solve obviously. But here's one thing that you can consider for solving this system. We know that x is going to be greater than or equal to n and also at the same time less than 11 over s. So we can basically say that this boundary value is always going to be less than this boundary value. So that gives us a nice inequality, which can be written as n is less than 11 over n. And obviously, if you work it out, this is going to be n squared minus 11 is less than 0. And of course, this inequality has a solution where n is between negative root 11 and positive root 11. So that's the first inequality that we need to solve for n. Now, the second part comes from here. Well, if you just look at the boundaries again, we can safely say that 10 over n is always going to be less than n plus 1. Let's go ahead and write that down. 10 over n is less than n plus 1. And from here, if you do the math, and remember that n is positive in this case, we made an assumption we get the following quadratic inequality, n squared plus n minus 10 is greater than zero. Of course, this is quadratic, so you may want to use the quadratic formula. You know, it's not factorable, obviously, into rationals, but what we can do is we can use the quadratic formula and just write it in terms of its roots. And if you work it out, because when a quadratic equation with a positive a, so it's a parabola that's upward, and we know that we want it to be positive, that means it's above the x-axis, so if you kind of think about it graphically, I don't know if the roots are going to be this way, but something like this. So when the graph is positive, that means that the n values are basically going to be outside the roots, right? So we can safely say that n is greater than the positive root. In this case, it's going to be negative 1 plus the square root of 41 over 2, if you just use the quadratic formula, or n needs to be less than negative 1 minus the square root of 41 over 2. But we'll discard the negative 1 because we know that n is positive in this case. Remember our assumption. Okay, so we're going to take this. We have this inequality and we have this inequality. And then again, since n is positive, this only means that n is between 0 and root 11. Okay, if you put those two together, obviously negative 1 plus root 41 over 2 
is less than square root of 11 because it's kind of close to like 2 point something and square root of 11 is greater than 3. Okay, cool. So that means that n needs to be, that's, this is our conclusion and this is super duper important because that's basically going to give us the solution pretty much. This means that n is between negative 1 plus square root of 41 over 2 and square root of 11. Now, remember that n is an integer and not just an integer but it's a positive integer and n needs to be in this interval. So what is that supposed to mean? Well it just means there's only one possible value that means n is equal to 3. Great! So this is kind of like a really nice result because now we got a single value for n. Now what would happen if we got a bunch of values? We would test all of them and work with each one separately. Okay, now if n is equal to 3, I'm going to go back to the original inequalities that we set up here for x and then replace n with 3 and we'll get again another system of inequalities and we're just going to solve that and that's going to give us the intervals for x. Okay, let's go ahead and substitute 3 into those inequalities and we should be getting something like this. 10 over 3 and then we have the x and then here we have the 11 over 3. But remember that we do have an equality here and, and oh, I, have to, I have to say and because that's an intersection, x is between and here remember our inequality says that it's between n and n plus 1 so x is between 3 and 4. Now if you look at the intersection of these two inequalities, of course, of course we can do that on a number line. So if you place these values, 3 is the smallest and we get the 10 thirds and then we get the 11 thirds and then we get the 4. Now this inequality here, the first one, basically tells us that our x values are going to be in this interval, of course with 10 thirds being equal and 11 thirds not included. And the other inequality just tells us that okay x is going to be between 3 and 4 it can be equal to 3, but not equal to 4. And you have to look at the intersection of these two inequalities, right? So where do they intersect? Well, they exactly intersect where the second inequality, I mean the first inequality is. Therefore, as a result, we can safely say that x needs to be between 10 thirds and 11 thirds. And you can pretty much verify this. Like if you plug in 10 thirds, for example, let's go ahead and test that out. That's kind of fun. For example, if x is equal to 10 thirds, then the floor value of 10 thirds, because 10 thirds is about 3.3, .3, right? I mean, roughly speaking, of course, it's a repeating decimal, but roughly speaking, its floor value is going to be 3. So from here, we get the floor value of 3x, which can be written again as 3 times 10 thirds, which is the floor value of 10, which is equal to 10 itself. So 10 thirds satisfies, of course, this is not a proof, but we're just kind of testing some values. Of course, if you, if you replace x with 11 thirds, it's not going to work, but anything between those values is going to work. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video at the same time. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.